find pretty new in the uh, in the field, but I have learned so much in the last three days. And um, uh, based on my limited understanding, I think the challenge for e-learning is really how to um, um, use the technology effectively to really help uh, learning and teaching. Uh, but, uh, but intrinsically, it seems to be a very interdisciplinary uh, a problem involving a lot of different expertise. And uh, my own expertise is uh, really the ICT. And um, I can build software. But uh, in order to really use that technology to help the learning, I mean, I need, to, I need the help from other disciplines. So my first question is, um, uh, given it is a, a multidisciplinary uh, problem, I mean, how can we bring the uh, uh, people from different fields together to really concentrate? It's almost like we need to have a large forum for this group of people to work together. Okay. But, but, uh, I think the, uh, to put people together in a random fashion, I mean, uh, maybe Professor Ross is correct, and Ross is correct, I mean, it may take uh, many years to get somewhere, but uh, it's not very systematic. Okay. And another problem is uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Chen had mentioned, it involves a lot of different interests from the different players. And uh, that actually can be an impeding effect to what we can do. But on the other hand, if we, with a proper arrangement, can also be an encouraging effect to bring the uh, people together to really shoot for a common goal. So my another question really is, uh, given we know there are so many different stakeholders in the, in the, in the, in the thing, I mean, what, should we, what should we do in, from university or from government to really encourage, to have an encouraging environment for people who really like to work together. Okay. So that's really the, uh, the two questions I have in my mind. I mean, after three days, a crash course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I think we have space for one or two more sorts of responses before I sort of um, give an opportunity for the panel members to have the finals of the response. My name is Bernard, I'm from Singapore. Uh, my million dollar question is, what will it take to teach the next generation schools? Um, do we have insights as to how to get there? And uh, do we know how the schools in 2020 will look like? Uh, we've spent the past days looking at um, technologies, and people have been asking questions about uh, how to use Web 2.0. 0 3.0 technologies, but perhaps we are not looking at the right areas. Uh, why are we not looking at the skills needed for the future? Uh, skills like um, the skills of students and knowledge and understanding, as well as uh, what uh, perspectives and attributes which students will need in the future. Uh, could you make a comment? Thank you. So maybe we'll sort of, okay, so I'll try to sort of wrap up a little bit and then I can then invite our panelists. Um, what seems to have emerged, um, you know, although the physical ecology that we are in from different countries, from Sweden, uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, the physical um, or geographical um, ecology is quite different, but it seems that educationally, especially in terms of the e-learning ecology, there seems to be a lot in common. So, so I think the first day, um, Canada say, oh, it's after listening to, to Jordi, um, so, oh, I've never, I, I don't really know that much about what happened in, in Catalonia or Spain, but there seems so much a similarity, but of course, you know, in Malaysia, in Singapore, and everywhere else, uh, Sweden, it is so similar. So ecologically, there is a lot of similar um, sort of challenges. And even when you talk about technicians, we all smile because we all know. So, so in a way, um, the challenge is, I don't think uh, any one of us in the system want to be a mosquito, but <laughs> We don't want to be pests, but but at the same time, it's actually very, 
very common that we do things which sort of counteract each other. So, so in, in a sense, how can we build a system? And I know that in Hong Kong, this is not possible, but when the government legislates a policy, then it would actually filter through. I mean, you can have a vision, but how can it sort of work downwards? At least in Hong Kong, I don't think it would work that way. So, so we've been um, talking about what it takes. I mean, and it seems that you know, each and every element counts. Um, technicians count. Um, the, and sometimes it's not just technician. You're talking about the the, the, um, the commercial sector, the market. I mean, a lot of times, even you know, say the ISP. I mean, what kind of services they, they give to schools and what kind of constraints or, or possibilities these allow is important. Uh, we, we hear people talk about, um, say, teacher. What about professional development? How can we how can we deal with those? Uh, what about firewall security? And then, um, well, we have to um, talk about how do we achieve interdisciplinary, um, you know, collaboration and, and working together? And what about negative effects? Um, and this talk about basic skills. What do we mean by basic skills? Basic skills today, basic skills yesterday, and there's also talking about basic skills tomorrow. So um, I don't think we will have the same view. And if we believe in um, you know, an ecology, then things are always changing. We're always trying to chase what we think the future will be. So uh, with this kind of um, sharing, I think this is very enlightening, and I would like um, our panelists to um, give their sort of final words of wisdom uh, before we can announce that this conference is coming to a close. Yes, Julie. Sure.